Hi there, folks. Welcome to our Vegas Nation Stadium Show, where we provide inside analysis and all the updated information on what's happening with the NFL Stadium set to open here in Las Vegas in 2020. I'm Ed Graney, sports columnist for the Las Vegas Review-Journal, and I'm pleased to be joined again today by our man on All Things Stadium, Review-Journal reporter Rick Vallada. How are you, Rick? I'm doing fantastic. Good to see you. Um, you were a happy camper because <laughs> you were a part of a group this week that got to, and you've done this many times, tour the NFL Stadium. Correct. And it's kind of growing before your eyes. So you met with Don Webb again, the construction manager, the man in charge out there. Why don't you take, take the folks at home through the tour, but also specifically there's, there's been a lot of stories um, that we've done and you've done, of course, on the trusses of the stadium. And while the people at home might not want, I wonder why that's such a big deal, why is that a big deal in terms of this place opening on time in July of 2020? So explain trusses, because I think the average person would be like, what's a truss? Right, it's, uh, it's kind of an L-shaped uh, steel beam that, that, that is placed. There's 26 of them that go around the very top of the arena, and it goes all the way around the, the entire circumference of, of the stadium. And basically what it does is it holds the roof in place. Yeah. So it's attached to that outside ring, and then once they are all in, they will build the, the, the actual ceiling, the, the, the special roof that you can see through. Okay on the ground in the stadium bowl, and then they'll take cranes and ride, it raise it up. it up to the very top and then hook it down. Uh, there's steel cables within this uh, roof structure. They have to stretch all those out to the exact precision lengths that they need to be. Uh, but the, the fact is, is that those trusses have to be precisely in place in order for that roof to work properly. Now, the reason why it's so important and why we had problems with the trusses, we, I say, why the, the construction crews had problems with the trusses was that the uh, one of them was went up it was one eighth of an inch off which might as well be completely off though so, i think people so, yeah, well, they know, hear that and they think that's a huge number that might as well be 10 feet off i mean it cannot be an eighth of an inch off exactly and they they have the the equipment that they've got to measure exactly where these things have to be so when they saw that it was an eighth of an inch off, they said, you know, we, we've got to make some adjustments. We've got to reconfigure this. So they took it down. Don Webb was hoping to get all of those trusses in by July 31st. He's now quite, not quite sure that it's going to happen by that date. He said maybe more mid-August that they would all be in. But it doesn't matter. And right. the reason why it doesn't matter is because there are so many things that have to be done in other parts of the stadium that they can work on without having those trusses in place, that they can work on those instead. And the perfect example as we were walking in the stadium, okay, we start off the tour by going down on the floor level. And when we're down on the floor level, I noticed that they were building uh, something that looks like railroad tracks. There's like 13 rails that extend from the middle of the stadium floor all the way out. Well, what's that for? That's for the tray that they're going to build the that the field, field will yeah. be on. So they're actually installing the rails right now. Now that was something that wasn't supposed to happen for several weeks down the road, but because of the fact that there's an opportunity to do that now, uh, they, they're, they're going to ahead and doing it. So that will basically be ahead of the game, right. and that's why the overall project is still on schedule because of the fact that they can do other things before they get to that, that roof truss issue. Uh, one of the uh, versatile and cool things about this stadium is gonna be what Rick just said. Uh, the Raiders are gonna be on grass. Right. The Rebels of UNLV will be on turf. Right. There will be another surface, concerts, trade shows, whatever. Talk about that. Not every stadium in the country has this ability on trays to bring different surfaces in and out. Probably the most diverse uh, ground cover in, of, of any stadium in the country right now. And think of it this way, on the very ground level is concrete, okay, right. a very smooth concrete. Which you can use for some events. Right, and you can drive in on it. Right. It's, it's, uh, it's trucks a high-tolerance right. surface so that uh, trucks and, and uh, equipment can be brought in on those trucks. Also down there will be rails that will be uh, to, to move the uh, grass field. Also down there will be the artificial turf. So the artificial turf that the Rebels will be playing on is actually about uh, four feet lower than the grass surface because right. of the fact that that tray is going to be that tall and will have to be 
uh, brought in when, when it's a game day situation. Did you, I heard, get to go through the Raiders and UNLV football locker room? We did. We did. Now, when you went into the Raider locker room, were there any nameplates up? Because at this point, other than Carr, and I'm not even sure there, would there be nameplates up? Probably not yet, but what did you think of the locker rooms? Well, they're, the, the thing is, is that they're, they're spacious, of course. Huge. Did you feel good walking through the locker room? Could you yeah, see Gruden yeah. they, screaming at people and, yeah. you know, and they, they, giving the fiery halftime speech? You know, they, they don't have the actual lockers in right, yet, right. but it's but all you roughed could, in. Could you actually you see. see how it will be sure. formatted? Really? Yeah. And, so they're and, that far along with some of these things. And, and they have the, uh, uh, the, the route set up so that when the Raiders take the field, mm -hmm. they will uh, emerge from inside the, uh, their, their locker room right. and go and actually walk through, probably run through a... Uh, club area. Okay. okay, that's where uh, fans who are willing to pay the high price to be. That's in that where you club. and I will not be. Exactly. <laughs> uh, we, maybe we'll be there for a tour. <laughs> I will be on that's the roof. About it. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. So, uh, but they'll they'll actually pass right through that club, and uh, people can give them high fives and everything right. before they take the field. Other uh, huge news you broke this week at TheReviewJournal.com. AEG has been chosen to manage the stadium. Tell, we know, well, I mean, not everyone might know, so tell everyone who AEG is. You and I know them in terms of their stadiums across the world, but who is AEG and what entails managing a stadium? What kind of revenue streams do they see? What do they do on a daily basis to manage a stream? And I assume, who made this decision? Yeah, uh, well, the, the Raiders are a part of that decision. Uh, the stadium authority does not have to sign off on it. All they require is that there be a management team in place. Okay. And uh, you know, one thing that Steve Hill mentioned to me is as well, I think everybody around here knows that AEG is capable of doing this. They have another little arena yeah, up the street so that houses they, the Golden Knights. Exactly, exactly. And, and the fact that they, uh, they have that Vegas vibe, they mm -hmm. understand the Vegas market, this, uh, this is a, a pretty good move on their part. And, and AEG has relationships with uh, dozens of entertainers, mm -hmm. dozens of uh, the there go the concerts shows. and the other events that, that exactly. you could bring in. And they have uh, stadium management uh, opportunities in other locations around, not just the country, around the world. Right. So if there's somebody who is going to go on a world tour and they would... Springsteen. Uh, yeah, Springsteen for, yes. is a great example, yes. perfect example, that uh, they can book them in one location. They can then say, oh, let's bring them over to Las Vegas. Right. What and does managing do a stadium mean? What does that mean? That means that they would have control over hiring all the employees. That okay. means that they would take care of all the financials. They would take care of all the, uh, the details in terms of running. Uh, I'm not clear on the concession. Okay. I think the concession But they're separate. hiring the, 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 the work. Yeah, the, the people who would actually work okay. there. And AEG, uh, be, because they have this, this global relationship uh, among all these different arenas and places where, where performances occur, they're, they're in, in, a, in a great position to be able to, uh, to manipulate some of these schedules. Sure. One of the things sure. that Don Webb talked about yesterday was that, you know, Las Vegas as a market is, uh, is, a, is appealing to a lot of people. They'll come here for a concert even though it's not really close by because right. they want the Vegas experience. Right. They want to come and do other things while they're here. Exactly. And that's exactly what Steve Hill and the LVCVA have been saying. That's exactly what uh, uh, all the people who have been gearing up for this have been talking about. Now we're seeing some reality and seeing that AEG is the, is the, the contracted uh, uh, manager. The final point on AEG, I was actually surprised um, when the Raiders got uh, approved by the NFL, Jerry Jones was uh, behind it big time. Uh, right. He wanted them. I think he saw the revenue opportunities, the revenue streams. Jerry Jones is part owner of Legends, another management company, along with the Yankees and others. I just thought it was, uh, I don't know if it's quid pro quo. I didn't know what it was. I just assumed Legends would be the manager of the same. They are not. Any idea if Legends bid on it, if they were ever in the discussions, or were the Raiders always on board with AEG? That, that hasn't been disclosed, but uh, I, like you, I'm a little bit surprised about that because we've, t we've heard so much yes. about Legends being the, 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 the team that would do it. Uh, but there's one thing that you do need to remember also, and that is that AEG oversees the Oakland Coliseum. Okay. So they have an established relationship with the Raiders. They have an established relationship uh, with the, the, some other venues in the Oakland area. So uh, they know each other. And in fact, Don Webb told me he, he knows very well the, the individual who's uh, running the show for AEG in this, in this particular thing. Okay. So I, I think there's a very genuine comfort level that exists 
in terms of making this happen and that probably was a part of the consideration when it came down to it. As usual, all great stuff. Really, thank you, Rick. Well, there you have it. We hope you enjoyed the show. And remember, for all your stadium and Raiders news, go to ReviewJournal.com daily. And always check back here at Vegas Nation, where we continue to bring you stadium shows as the project's built before our very own eyes. As Rick is out there with all these tours, I have to join him one of these days and get in that locker room just to see what nameplates are up there in terms of players. For Review Journal's Rick Villada, I'm Ed Graney. We thank you for watching, and we'll talk to you next time on the Stadium Show.